non causal systems are very difficult to realize them physically anyway we will look at the applications of causal, causal and non causal systems in the communication theory course but here let's try to understand how to find out whether a system is a causal system or a non causal system so a discrete system is said to be causal if the output of the system at any time n if it depends only on the present and the past inputs so it has to depend only on n or n minus 1 n minus 2 dash 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 if it depends only on the present that is the n value and and all the past inputs and if it doesn't depend on the future inputs so the future inputs will be something like n plus 1 n plus 2 n plus 3 so these are all future inputs so if it doesn't depend on the future inputs then it is said to be a causal system so the output of the causal system should should have the following form so y of n should be actually a function of x of n x of n minus 1 x of n minus 2 dash 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 so if this is the kind of input output characteristic you know for a particular system then it is said to be a causal system so if the system does not satisfy this condition then it is said to be a non causal system okay as i told you causality is is very important to physically realize system if it is a non causal system it is very difficult to physically realize because it is easy to always accrue the the past inputs but so it's pretty difficult you know to uh, anticipate or to get the future inputs of the signal because you you don't know what kind what will be the the future input of a signal it's very hard that's the reason i say that it is physic it is hard to physically realize a non causal system let's look at some of the examples the first example y of n equal to x of n minus x of n minus 1 from this it's very clear that this depends only on the present input x of n and the previous input x of n minus 1 so this is a causal system and what about y of n equal to x of n square from from this equation it is not very clear whether n can take positive values or negative values so y of n can depend on the future values also and hence this is referred to as non causal system so also if it is a causal system you will see that the signal is right handed that means you will find the signal only on the right hand side of the time axis that is a, a simple trick to check whether it is a causal or non causal so if the signal x of t versus t or x of n versus n is is of this type that means if it lies above t equal to 0 we, we say it is signal is right handed that is one way to check whether the, it is a causal system or a non causal system and the other the other one which i already told you about the definition if the output if it does not depend on the further input that is on the future input then also it is said to be a causal system so these are two simple ways of you know checking whether a system is a causal or a non causal system the next classification of the system is stable versus unstable stable versus unstable any system in this nature belongs to one of these two categories so it, it should be either a stable system or an unstable system so an arbitrary relaxed system is said to be bounded input bounded output stable it's called bibo stable bounded input bounded output so it is referred to be bibo stable if and only if what is the condition if and only if if the if you give the input sequence which is bounded and if that results in a bounded output 
so this is bounded bbo stable if and only if bounded input if it produces bounded output if bounded input produces bounded output then it is said to be a stable system or we could also define this in terms of the impulse response we will look at the impulse response a bit more in the future lectures impulse response if it is absolutely summable if it is absolutely summable that means if you sum take the summation of this impulse response from minus infinity to plus infinity that should be a finite which means if you take the summation of the impulse response of a discrete system say sigma of h of n if it is less than infinity or if this is finite this is finite then it is said to be a stable system so this is the condition this is a sufficient condition for stability and also it is the necessary condition for stability so this condition we can say it is both necessary and sufficient condition necessary and sufficient condition for stability if there is a system which does not satisfy this this property then it is said to be a unstable system now let us look at the the last kind of classification that is invertible versus non invertible systems invertible versus non invertible invertible versus non invertible systems a system is said to be invertible if there is a one to one correspondence between its input and output signals so there has to be one to one correspondence one to one correspondence between its input and output signals then only we, we can say that this signal this this system is a invertible system that means if you know the output sequence y of n say n can take values from minus infinity to plus infinity if you know the output sequence of this invertible system then we should be able to find out from this we should be able to find out we should be able to find able to find its input x of n right so if that is possible and that is possible only when there is a one to one correspondence between these two signals i think you understood this so if there is no one to one correspondence between x of n and y of n it's hard to find x of n for any given y of n for example if y of n is equal to a into x of n where a is a constant if this is a kind of system where the output is a scaled version of the input from this it's clear that if there is a one to one relation between these two and if you know the output then you can easily find input as x of n equal to 1 by a into y of n so this system can be referred to as invertible system on the other hand if you have a system like this y of n equal to x square of n this will be definitely a non invertible system why is it non invertible system it is non invertible because even if you know y of n say for example y of n takes a value of 4 what can you expect for the value of x of n 
x of n can be 2 or minus 2 x of n can take values either 2 or minus 2 so there is uncertainty in the value of x of n given the value of y of n which means that you know you will not be able to exactly find out x of n given y of n hence this system is said to be a non invertible system so these are the different kinds of classifications of the system major ways of classifying systems to summarize we have seen how many types six types of classifying systems the first one being static versus dynamic systems second time invariant versus variant systems then linear versus nonlinear systems then fourth causal versus non causal systems fifth stable versus unstable systems and sixth invertible versus non invertible systems